it's it's sort of it's defined, you know. It's not like it's she's built. It's 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 a diet. diet yeah, I think. but look how defined every. Look at this. Yeah. Ah. Oh. But it's a lot of I think exercise. I Madonna is built like that. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so too. I think I she's the seen. most amazing personality. I'm a big fan of Me too. And it has nothing to do with how well she sings or anything. She reinvents herself every time. And I don't know anybody that is 25 years on top. No, I know. And still, and still get thousands and thousands of people to come and to buy and to do. She's great. Her concerts are great, everything. And these pictures Stephen's taken of her are fantastic. Well, Stephen Klein and her are very, have a great Real rapport. And that's why those photographs are so great, because, yeah, they have connection. And he connects to her, and they all love the horses, as you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you ride all the time. You look better and better. Oh, thank all you. All the years I know you. No, you I'm a big younger. supporter of Stephen's work. I have a lot of his horse images. You'll be at the Classic? I'll be at the Classic, yeah. I'm mm. competing this week. And so this is a big horse week out here. Perfect to have yeah. the show. Every year. That's why we kept yeah. it late, so so every all the horse show people. Uh, they're out. They came poster. out today, probably. Yeah, and he has his poster mm -hmm. for the horse show. Yeah, he's been kind enough to donate one of his images, um, which is going to be auctioned off to raise money for the horse show. Mm -hmm. um, it became the cover, right? It became the cover, and it's the gray neck. It's the gray neck out in the front of the of the gallery. Yeah. So that was really nice that he did that. Oh, good luck on, on the uh, horse show. Thank you. Yeah, what's the most difficult thing in the training? I think that the, uh, to get your horse to be ready to compete and not be distracted by the audience and the sounds and the tents and to get him calm enough so that he can just concentrate on the jumps and you be able to ride him in sync. And it's a, it's a question of both. Yeah. Both the rider and the horse. His horse is about 70% of the rider have to be in sync. A it real connection. Sense. It makes sense because there's so many people there that the well, horse have a very different environment. That's by it. what goes on around the property. It's, a, it's got a, you know, a lot going on at that horse show. Sure. And there's shopping for kids and shopping for grown-ups and all sorts of things, tents and... Other horses and noises. Tons of noises. They have to be sort of not zoned out. Yeah, zoned out from that. Well, I hope the weather is going to be better. And, uh, it's always it a little be a tricky wonderful, this wonderful time, time of but, year. Uh, we'll be rooting for you. Thank you. And be sure to stop by. We'll, uh, we'll be sure to get you on. Okay. Thank you, dear. All right, with the boots and all. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a little bit more Thank than you. that. I think uh, this is uh, Madonna as, as a maybe horse. as a horse, as an animal, yeah. And she certainly is an animal, you know. So it's, it's a very exciting uh, sequence of, of photographs as she, like, you know, moves with the camera. And I think it's very exciting. I know you did, the, here you did the Bert Stern, Marilyn Monroe, but would you equate... Oh, yeah. Madonna as this era's Marilyn, would you say? Um, you know, Madonna is Madonna, and Marilyn had a different sort of sensitivity to her that mm -hmm. everybody, that she's still the biggest icon. Uh, Madonna is, is still alive and going, so, you know, uh, you can't put a monument on her because she always surprises us with another bigger and better and more. Constantly uh, reinventing but herself. I think that she is certainly one of the biggest icon of our time. And, uh, and Marlene is dead and she is going to be kept in beauty and in, in her vulnerability and with Bert Stern taking her pictures, he was there with her for a whole weekend just before she died and she asked for him. So it is a very beautiful report. And I represent Bert Stern. Mm -hmm. And we have all those great Marlins, uh, Marlin Monroe's photographs here. Sure. And you know, you've seen them. I've seen uh, them. This is now 
a different show, and this is Stephen Klein that we represent also. It's our second show. Mm -hmm. uh, we sold to, out I want, last you to talk, year. I want you to talk about Stephen Klein because people know of him as a as a great uh, portrait mm -hmm. artist, a great, mm -hmm. all, a lot of the covers, a lot of the celebrity shots mm -hmm. that we know. Yeah. You know, uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and uh, Madonna, the list goes on. And, yeah. But give us an idea, just for the people at home, basically, a little bit be behind what Stephen is. Well, uh, you can't, well, Stephen is really a very sensitive, wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. that beside the point that he is uh, have so much to do he's going to shooting all over the world he travels with Madonna all the time uh, uh, all those big stars they're good friends it's not just photographer but also he's amazing fashion photographer and a photographer all together now it's very interesting that if you talk about fashion photographers Man Ray was a fashion photographer mm -hmm. uh, Helmut Newton was a fashion photographer Avedon Richard Avedon was a fashion photographer and they were all recognized as a really great artists and great photographers so one thing is you know you can be great fashion photographer and not be a great mm -hmm. but photo he's, photographer. Beyond, he's beyond so that he's, he's very edgy there's a certain edge he is edgy yes and and that's his personality mm -hmm. and it's also very much a sign of our time I mean, just another picture is just another picture. He does it in such a great, uh, the, the setting of his uh, fashion photographs are like 19th or 18th century uh, painting up to day with the contemporary. So it's such a nice merge of the past and the future mm -hmm. in his and, and the and the models are almost like still life you know you don't relate to them as well, let, people. Let's take a look around uh, let's have a look. Yeah. And yeah, of course he's very much into the horses because he rides horses he owns horses and Does he, he have a stable out here? Stand, yeah and he understand the horse now you take a look at this look at this horse you know you look at it and you see an abstract something you don't know what it is and when you get closer you suddenly start to see the veins you see all the veins and and the the coat of the of the horse and and the horse appear so it's not just here's a horse is a horse is a horse but it's Stephen Klein's horse and at the Verit Gallery, you can see them now because they are amazing. Now describe, they're mounted on aluminum? On aluminum, yeah. And, and look the way he framed them, like, like you, you put it on the horse, you see? Like a brand. Stephen Klein, like a brand, yeah. Stephen Klein, SK. Uh -huh. And they're all stamped. On, ma on these mahogany frames. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's really a fabulous photograph and, and a real great look, you know. You put it and it's so powerful. Anywhere you, you show it, it's just amazingly powerful. Now we also have here Maplethorpe. Those three photographs are Maplethorpe. We have Man Ray. Uh, we have Warhol. We have Avedon mm -hmm. photographs. So, a little bit very, of everything. Very no, but the very important 19th and 20th century masterpieces. Mm -hmm. So, it's really the best, the queen of the photographs. And this is a wonderful Warhol. See, this is this is, as we know, Barbara Streisand. Yeah, yeah. isn't that amazing? Beautiful this was done by Richard Avedon. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And, and Man Ray Above Man It. Man Ray Above It. All those are Man Ray photographs, these unique pieces. Um, the frames are beautiful. They were done mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes, yeah. They look as a whole, yeah. Let's and this is a part of uh, what we show all the time, all the, the cover of the uh, 
uh, poster, Classic. the Hampton Classic poster. And uh, as you see, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And I want, I think it's at Stevens Horse. Well, it's beautiful. And Just he donated one piece, as, as Kelly Klein told you. He donated one photograph to be for the auction. For the yeah, and uh, and this is uh, uh, by now sold uh, four of them, and uh, they are only seven in the addition. So sold four, and we have three more. Maybe uh, by the end of the day. Well, it's a lot. Beautiful. Like we did last year, we sold out his work because he's very popular, he's a fantastic photographer, and basically they are inexpensive still. Sure. And it's like a, with Helmut Newton, when I started to sell his work, I sold those large pieces, the addition of 10, I sold for 40,000, then I sold it for uh, 80 and 160, and now, is dead and said 380. It's a great investment. And it is a great investment and it's beautiful. And so you can enjoy you it. You don't in your have home. to, yeah. Oh, this is amazing. Let's talk about this piece here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what should I tell you? A horse, a strong horse, you can see the muscles. And as I said before, it looks like an abstract object. And or a beautiful land. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, or maybe a Richard Serra uh, steel, but then you see all those muscles and you, you can tell, look at those muscles, look how beautiful, you see? And you can tell the strength of the horse, which he projects, mm -hmm. and the beauty. And you don't see the whole thing, which is sometimes more interesting. Right. Because it's the same thing with nudity. It's more interesting if you don't see the whole thing. You know, like what Madonna does. And so this is amazing photographs, and Stephen would be here. And uh, all his how, how, do you, how do you select? How do you select an artist to exhibit here? What goes through the process? Well, we, uh, first of all, very carefully. Second of all, they have to be already very famous mm -hmm. because I don't, you know, I gave. I have the gallery, the Verit Gallery is here in the same place for over 30 years mm -hmm. in East Hampton, right. here by the Starbucks. We deal with important sure. art and the important get more and better, like we do. Well, I'm going to let you rejoin thank your you. guests. I'm going to thank talk to Jan here with Janet Lear. Janet, thank you for uh, inviting us once again to the Vera Galleries. But you're an expert in photography, among other things. And uh, please share with the viewers your take on this uh, beautiful exhibit. The exhibit is transforming, really. The, um, the subject seems simple in that it's basically horses, but it's far more than that because you have um, Stephen's portrait with horses, and you have his cinematic references using the Madonna stills that were really from the concert and the whole series that Stephen helped orchestrate in the first instance in 2006. So the piece that we're facing is a Madonna that was published in W Magazine, but is conceptually part of that uh, concert series and you have other works on the far wall, which are four Madonnas, in, uh, which Stephen calls dancing in the stalls. But Stephen is uh, very conscious of the movement, whether it be the horse or be Madonna. Mm -hmm. And they are sensational works. Beautiful works. Really. This yeah. is the first time they've been shown. And, and if you could speak to the size, they're uh, on aluminum. They're, they're silver prints on aluminum. They're mammoth in size. They're 60 by 48 inches. On uh, mahogany frames. The frames are gorgeous. They've been designed by Stephen and Charles Rugger. And the... Then the branding, branding is very is special, yes. The, the, the SK monogram sits on these very large Rugger frames. It's incredible. If you're a horse fancier or you're looking for beautiful works, even the they have like almost a landscape appeal to them. Well, in the portraits, in the horse portraits there, many of them are abstracted. 
and as you abstract, then you get to imagine many things. Mm -hmm. uh, the pelts are very glossy. The lighting on the animals is fabulous. And the exciting, braiding is the, the bra ev the, Well, the, the grooming, because on some horses it's braided, on others they're just curried and combed. But whichever way, they're luminous. Um, Sally Hirschberger is going to buy, be by shortly. She probably could talk about the um, effects of the, the grooming on the horses. She's a very famous hairstylist. Sure, and you can see that they're very well maintained. Absolutely. The coats are beautiful. And um, it's a beautiful piece, uh, beautiful pieces. These the horses are maintained beautifully. They're exercised, they're, they're stretched, they're groomed. They're, they, they are cared for in the ultimate way. And as a, as a collection, as a piece to collect, um, it's really as, makes sense to... to as so collectibles, nobody does it quite the way Stephen does. Nobody has the grasp of, of the... Uh, of that, that, that black and white, the chiaroscuro, mm -hmm. that gives it so much intensity. Mm -hmm. And that's because Stephen is a great photographer. He's now, who do you think influenced him? Who do I think influenced him? That's a good question. I see the cinematic influences. I, I can see the, the surreal in the influences. But now in the still photographs and the portraits, I imagine that he goes back to the great Avedons. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't hesitate to say that. Mm -hmm. And the great Man Rays, which are so uh, dependent upon lighting. Because of the fashion influence, because of the... Because of the handling of light. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say directly because of the fashion. I think it's, it has to do with lights and dogs. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing, absolutely amazing. And you know, whenever we come here, there's always, it's uh, new and inventive. If we talk, about cinematic on this simple ledge we have the earliest piece the, well not the earliest on the ledge but we have an Aikens and he was the earliest painter to explore motion uh -huh. in a real sense and he used in this photograph a method evolved by Marais in the 1870s this photograph was done in 1882 and it shows a human in motion it precedes the famous Mybridge series mm -hmm. that was done in 1887 of human in motion and the animals in motion. Right next to it, jumping almost, um, oh, this is 1930, so jumping almost 70 years, we have a, a Redchenko, a very famous Russian artist who was creating a meaning in a storytelling manner as well. Mm -hmm. And these were very Soviet uh, pictures. They were, they were meant to show the strength of the Soviet regime. They were... Propaganda. They were propaganda. However, if you look at them closely, and, and I hope the camera can pan in, you'll see that, in fact, the human tower, and it's called the human tower, is really supported by stilts, not by the men holding those, those uh, platforms. Now, today they would have eliminated that with Photoshop, I know. Maybe they would have, but I'm glad that we saw the reality. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. One of the great photographs, one of the greatest photographs in this collection today is the uh, Lalvin Langdon Coburn view of New York. And if you, you look at it carefully, you'll see that this is 1911. Uh, that motion was very important to Coburn too in creating this story of Manhattan. It's a single view, but he was talking about the great industrial Manhattan and the city with the Brooklyn Bridge and the, the, the Jersey tugboat and the puffs of smoke from the buildings. It looked like a bottle of champagne being popped open. Many bottles, yes. It's, it's very interesting to see that. It's a freshness. And when he did it, it was so alive. It was a first. Mm -hmm. It's a very dramatic photograph. Beautiful piece. It's a beautiful piece. It's in an extra large size. It's an exhibition pin for the period. It's signed and dated. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's really super. I love it. Can you do a man right? Of course. The ball fight is 1926. It's at St. Sebastian in northern Spain. 
Uh, that was 1926? 1926. The yeah. print is monogram signed by Man Ray, which is very unusual, and the size is unusually large. It's a vintage print, of course. I, I, I only deal in vintage prints. And the, uh, the voyeurism is very fresh for its period. You might say that it's a today kind of work, mm -hmm. um, very conceptual. But that was where Man Ray starred. He created those conceptual views. He was thinking on a different plane than other, other, other artists. He used his fashion photography to pay his bills, and he was very successful. But these photographs were all done for his own pleasure. And, or they were done like a Toile de Mer was done on the edge here, was done uh, to, uh, as a, this is a film clip from a film that was eight minutes long, and it was done in 1928. And this particular view was illustrated in View magazine of the same period to publicize this film. Y you see what appears to be motion, but indeed it's not real motion. It's Man Ray using his skills in uh, airbrushing to create the movement of the waves. So they're very much handcrafted. They're very much handcrafted, of course. They're all, they're all vintage prints, and most of them are unique. Now my eye has fallen to the, the Barbara Streisand, of course, um, which is now we're talking about modern photography. Um, Man uh, Streis um, Avedon had in his bookcase up in Montauk two rows of books on Man Ray. So well, now we're talking whose hero was whose. Mm -hmm. And the same way you asked me who Stephen Klein might have looked at, mm -hmm. and I said Avedon. Avedon looked at Man Ray. And I'm sure Stephen looks at Man Ray as well. Sure. Um, the photograph in the center the Warhol. Is, a, is a Warhol. Uh, it's a group called the Rockets, a musical group. But uh, to me, what um, is very outstanding and very particular about Warhol's photographs is how he deconstructs and stitches them together. Pho photographs as an art form had always been held to be very precious. Uh, the, he treated them like you were stitching shoes. Right. <laughs> I guess his influence of, of being an illustrator of the shoes. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe, very, but there's, there's the, the quality of pop. Anyway. There's a, the quality of pop. Very good. Uh, anything that could be done was fair game. The, um, the, and, and they were always done in, in four images stitched together identical images. Uh, they're very interesting. In, in fact, it, it, Stephen saw that and then asked me to do a show of rare photographs around that print. So Stephen was influenced by looking at that uh, picture? I, I can't say that, but he was inspired for me to create this uh, show of exquisite vintage photographs. When he came in for the walkthrough yesterday, there was nothing on these print racks but that Warhol that I was looking at. He saw it and said, oh, that's fabulous. What else can you bring out? Uh, enough said about that. That's terrific. Wonderful. So, then we have, uh, of course, the wonderful Montgomery Clift, also by Avedon, happens to have as an added plus the fact that Monty Cliff was a local boy. He stayed in Montauk, and that's a Montauk beach scene. Terrific. And, and across the way, are two fabulous Maplethorpes, which bring us up to a, a more contemporary era. Uh, I wish you were here last week. We had up um, a Vitali and, um, and a fabulous Hockney. Uh, so we, we move into very modern times. But what we have up in this mini uh, Masterworks exhibition are works from uh, the very beginning of photography with a daguerreotype, still life, by uh, Frederick de Bourge Richards, a Philadelphia daguerreotypist, uh, to uh, the Maple Pops, I think, of the most recent photographs here. Unbelievable. So if you, if you come here, you get a very good taste of, of photography, the history, the evolution yeah. of, of modern photography. Yes, and you get a very good opportunity to collect some wonderful works. That's true. That's true. Now that daguerreotype is, what year would you say that? Uh, that daguerreotype would be 1849-50. Photography begins in 1839. Wonderful. Of course, we have two fabulous photographs. They are somewhat smaller, they're 40 by 30, and that's the, the size Stephen chose to do them in. Uh, they're, they're as massive in feeling as the 60 by 48 photographs. And you'll notice 
the the freckles that's the white spots on the horse on the right yes are freckles and it's a it's a pigment that is is is, is something that is rare in horses but exists and they have a name it's, as i say freckles but you can see the blood vessels, the muscles. Oh, yeah. the, the horses are very well cared for. The, the coats are beautiful. Yes, and that, that's, as I said, that's the lighting that Stephen has given them as well. You, you, you can never, you can never um, minimize the effect of the photographer. Uh, some, you might take the same pho photograph of the same horse, and it would be quite different. Stephen Klein, it's a great turnout, Stephen. This is unbelievable and it's terrific. What a what a edgy, provocative show you put together here. Oh, thank you very much. And your inspiration. I mean, you have uh, your background in fashion and these uh, wonderful pictures of Madonna and the horses. Uh, what inspires you? Um, well, I think a passion for riding to begin with, and I think that um, it's a combination. This show is a combination of how horses and equestrian can extend from, say, how Madonna interprets it to actual studies of horses to actually in a fashion sense with Dolce Gabbana, the news. So it kind of is, you always kind of can see, especially in the last couple of years, how people have kind of been um, drawn to equestrian in fashion and advertising and in uh, Madonna's show, she incorporated the openings to her show was equestrian inspired as well. And there's a, a real sensual load whenever you look at the, the portions of the horse or how Madonna uh, behaves like a horse. Uh, just the whole staging of it is exquisite. I mean, it, uh, it, it, one picture really speaks thousands of words. And Well, know, hopefully. I, I like my photographs to um, actually provoke questions and, and, and ask the viewer to look at them and to try to, to understand something about maybe there's a story or there's a hidden uh, scenario going on beneath the surface of them. Now will you be riding in the Hampton Classic? Um, I'm not this year. My horse got injured recently so I'm probably not going to ride but um, I'll probably be there watching. And I hope you bring your camera. I will. Well, actually, I won't, but... <laughs> and when you photograph a horse, uh, each horse has a specific personality. And, and just to titrate out what, what you look for, is it exactly like when you photograph a human? Yeah, I think it, it's instinctive. I mean, the funny thing that I was just actually speaking about to somebody is that it's almost easy to do the parts of the studies of horses. So you'll see a horse, and they'll be nice from behind, or they'll have mm -hmm. a great neck. but. Very few horses, actually, that I photograph to see the full body because some of them just, you know, hunters, of course, probably sometimes they look a bit too quiet or, you know, maybe out of the 30 horses that I photographed out of these series at the Hampton Classic, there's probably two or three. One of them was Goldinka, I think, McLean Ward's horse that just had this amazing star presence. And I guess, like models, they you know, you don't know until they're in front of the camera. Well, it's fantastic. And finally, the, the issue of digital photography, what are your feelings about that? Um, I feel like they're all tools. One needs to know it. I mean, all the horse uh, studies were done with film. The nudes were digital. Probably you can't tell the difference. And it's just like, you know, I use it as a tool and when it's appropriate. And the idea of the size, the mammoth size of these was that a decision that you... Well, I don't think they're actually that big because I actually... Um, I would like to even do the horses like... Probably like... like larger than, larger than life. life, I think. Because I think if you have a great room, to walk in a room and see a horse that's actually bigger than its actual size would be quite commanding. Well, I appreciate your time. I know that people are clamoring to speak oh. to you and congratulate you. And uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing it at the Hampton yeah, Classic. Maybe sure. you could stop by and I see will. us. I will. Okay. Thank you.